my name is Josiah Ray. I'm going to show you how to edit trick shots using Adobe After Effects. A trick shot really encompasses when you're trying to blend different elements from different video captures together, uh, trying to put in elements that are not there or you know, cut somebody out or bring together a couple of different dolly shots. I'm going to show you a very quick example though of one uh, trying to be like a, you know, a Jedi or a Dark Lord using the force to pick up a lightsaber. So here I've got my project in Adobe After Effects. That's me with the uh, very Sith-like bathrobe, tie and all. And we'll go ahead and render this out and take a quick look at what it looks like. So that's a pretty convincing capture, where the uh, lightsaber handle seems to fly right up into my hand. Let's take a look at what, what elements make this up. The most important thing to remember about trick shots, you get the final product in your head, what you'd like to have happen. Then you begin breaking it down into elements. The more you work with After Effects, the more you'll begin to understand which elements you'll need. So, let's make the layers invisible. I have my handle. And it doesn't do anything until right here. Now you can see the handle is getting masked out. But essentially, all this is is an image of a handle that's been blurred to look like it's flying through the air. Let's look at the handle itself. And you can see, um, let's go ahead and uh, I'll duplicate that and delete the mask. This is just a shot of the handle on the ground. What I've done is I put a mask onto it and freeze framed it. So you freeze frame the handle, put a mask on, and then you animate the layer itself to move. And the reason that you want to do the animation and the freeze framing and the masking here is we're going to do additional masking, a little bit of color correction in the other composition. So we've got the handle flying through the air. And this was, I had the, uh, the other footage of me grabbing it below this for reference so that I could animate it properly into the hand. So we'll get back over here and we've got the footage of me grabbing it and the handle coming right up into place. It's important to note though you can't really see any grass. Let's go ahead and zoom in and there was grass still inside the mask but if we take this we turn it off the grass is still there. What I've done is because the handle is supposed to be silver is I just took all the color out of it. So I tinted it to kind of like a uh, very, very, very light metallic blue. So it kind of got, has this tinting over it and then I put a directional blur on it. And the directional blur direction never changes. If this blur had been put onto the layer that was being animated, the direction would need to be animated in opposition, exactly in opposition to the movement of the layer. Doing it this way, you can just kind of put the direction on there because it's still flying in the same direction and not have to worry about animating twice. So the blur is moving around the handle. You can see it kind of pulling to the side and then later on it's pulling directly along it. But the handle's just kind of animating underneath the blur. So we have the handle moving in. Let's take this top mask off. And you can see something very important. There's a black hole cut out of my footage. We'll duplicate the footage and remove that. And you can see that I'm actually already holding the handle. So essentially what I did was I held the handle and I snapped it out to my side. But because the handle was coming into my hand, I just masked it out. So you remove the handle and have the fake handle flying in. This does leave a black hole though, as you saw. So we've got a black hole in our footage. To cover this black hole, I picked the time further back when this area was not being taken up by action, when it was just kind of rested and still. And this helps a lot to shoot off a tripod because you want the background, it's what's called a clean plate. You want the background without anything on it so that you can use it to fill in those black holes. I freeze framed it, so you can see as we scroll through, it doesn't move at all and it simply fills in the gap behind that black hole so you don't even see it. The last piece is as that handle flies into place I have a subtraction mask here so the handle disappears into my hand exactly at the same point that the other handle is revealed. So breaking down what you want to see in the finished product finding out the elements that you will need and how you want to shoot it. 
So I've shot this a couple of different ways. Uh, one is where you hold the prop out and then you throw it. And when you play it backwards, it looks like it comes into your hand. That can work in some shots and some shots it doesn't work. You can tell sometimes that a shot's been time reversed because the action doesn't quite look right. Uh, when you've got somebody walking, it's very difficult to fake walking forward by walking backwards. So a solution like this might work better. Um, shots where you've got cranes being composited in or cars or tanks or 3D objects. You'll need to think about what you're compositing in when you shoot the practical footage because again, a lot of stuff's going to have to be masked around the 3D objects, masked in front of it and behind it, and you may need a clean plate, which is very difficult to get if you're doing moving shots, such as dollies or tilts. Um, tilts can be faked, however. Uh, this is, in this shot that I had created earlier on, because it was sitting on a tripod, I grabbed the finished composition and kind of slid it under the camera to fake a pan. Uh, you can do it vertically to fake a tilt, but crane shots and dolly shots can be very difficult to mask into. So something important to consider while you're shooting. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to mask or edit trick shots using Adobe After Effects. I'm Josiah Ray. Thank <laughs> you.